The most important factor in dairy calf health and survival is ensuring that the newborn calf is fed adequate amounts of good quality colostrum early in its life. In this film, part of Dairyco's calf management series, we'll be looking at the importance of colostrum and how to maximise the benefits for optimum health and productivity of your calves. I'm joined now by Sarah from Dairyco. Sarah, why is getting colostrum feeding right so important? Colostrum is vital to the newborn calf because it contains antibodies which are required for the immunity to disease. It's also rich in essential nutrients that the calf requires for the first few days of life. A calf is born without any antibodies in its bloodstream and there is only a short window of time when antibodies, otherwise known as immunoglobulins, can be absorbed from the calf's gut. After this, gut closure occurs and the calf can no longer take up the antibodies. If the calf does not drink enough colostrum during this period of time, it is very vulnerable to infection and lacking the energy required to cope with the first few days of life. It is likely to show poor growth rates and may be costly to you, the farmer, as veterinary treatment may be required for infections such as joint ill, navel ill, scours or pneumonia. The calf may even die. In this short film, we're going to cover the three cues of colostrum administration. Why you should collect colostrum important considerations to prevent the spread of yonas, how to store colostrum, how to prepare and feed stored colostrum, and how to test for adequate transfer of immunity. The three cues is a handy way of remembering the golden rules for administering colostrum to ensure your calves get maximum benefit. The three cues stand for Quantity, quality and quickly. Quantity. Calves should be given at least 3 litres or equivalent to 10% of body weight of colostrum. The colostrum should be at body temperature, which is 38 degrees Celsius. Quality. Good quality colostrum is high in antibodies to boost the calf's immune system, as well as being a source of energy. To ensure high quality colostrum, collect it as soon as possible after calving. The concentration of antibodies in colostrum starts to decrease rapidly with each hour as the transition from colostrum to milk production occurs. There are many factors that can affect the quality of colostrum. Colostrum quality can be poor in higher yielding cows, if the dry period is shorter than four weeks, or if the cow leaks milk before she calves. Often, colostrum that looks watery is of poor quality. If the cow has mastitis or is being treated with antibiotics, the colostrum should not be used. However, this does not apply to dry cow treatment unless the dry period was unusually short. Bacterial contamination may also reduce the availability of antibodies to the calf. Quickly. The calf's ability to absorb the antibodies in milk declines with time. Therefore, the calf should ideally receive colostrum within two hours of birth. It's a legal requirement to give calves colostrum within six hours of birth. It's a good idea to collect and store colostrum from a cow which has excess so that the stored colostrum can be fed to calves whose dam has little or poor quality colostrum or from whom you don't wish the calf to suckle. You might need to tube feed a sickly calf or one that is reluctant to suckle. Having stored colostrum nearby makes this much easier. Of course, it's important to ensure the colostrum stored is of good quality and is collected and stored hygienically. A particular consideration when storing colostrum is that of Yoni's disease. The mycobacteria involved in Yoni's disease is easily passed from cow to calf in the colostrum. So we need to take steps to ensure that colostrum from Yoni's infected cows is not fed to calves. Cows on your farm will fall into three distinct Yonas categories. Cows which have tested negative for Yonas, those that have tested positive, and those whose disease status is unknown. Colostrum from those tested negative can be fed to calves and stored. Calves from Yonas positive cows should not be fed their dam's colostrum and instead given colostrum from a clean source. 
it's also best not to feed colostrum from cows whose Yona's status is unknown. Of course, Yona's disease can also be transmitted in faeces. The calf may be infected by faecal contamination from the cow's coat or udder. Calves from Yona's positive cows should therefore be snatched at birth to minimise their chances of infection. Any colostrum you intend to store should be collected as hygienically as possible to avoid bacterial contamination. Additionally, it should be tested to check there are sufficient antibody levels. Both these topics are covered in other Dairy Co films. Any microbes that do contaminate the colostrum will multiply very rapidly when it's stored. The number of bacteria double roughly every 20 minutes. For this reason, colostrum should either be fed within one hour of collection, refrigerated or frozen. There are three ways to slow down or prevent bacterial multiplication. Refrigeration, pasteurisation or freezing. The method you choose depends on the size of your farm and your management methods. If you use large amounts of colostrum regularly, it's best to refrigerate it. However, colostrum can only be refrigerated for a short period. If you don't use colostrum regularly, it is then best to freeze it. Refrigerated colostrum can be stored for up to 24 hours. You must ensure the fridge temperature is below 4 degrees and it's best to store the colostrum in 1 to 2 litre covered containers. Frozen colostrum can be stored for up to a year. You should make sure the freezer temperature is minus 18 to minus 20 degrees centigrade. If you're freezing colostrum, it's best to freeze it in the quantities needed, for example in 1 to 2 litre plastic bags, which are stored flat so they can be defrosted quickly. Pasteurising colostrum kills harmful bacteria and so reduces the bacterial load while at the same time maintaining acceptable levels of antibodies. Pasteurising colostrum also allows you to store it for longer, although of course you do still need to keep it in the fridge or freezer afterwards. It's best to pasteurise small amounts of colostrum at a time, 8 to 12 litres, as larger batches take longer to heat up, leading to a reduced concentration of antibodies. Remember, pasteurisation can't improve antibody levels in poor quality colostrum or make grossly contaminated colostrum more hygienic. Whichever method of storage you use, you should make sure that each sample is correctly labelled with date and cow ID number. This is particularly important with frozen colostrum, where cows may test positive for Yoni's disease at a later date. It is also really important to have a thermometer in your fridge or freezer and regularly record the temperature to avoid spoilage of colostrum. Whichever storage method you use, colostrum needs to be warmed before feeding it to the calf. Colostrum should be warmed to 40 to 42 degrees C and fed to the calf at 38. The best way to warm the colostrum is in a water bath. The temperature of the water should never be above 50 degrees centigrade. It's a good idea to test the temperature of both the colostrum and the water bath using a thermometer. You may need to replace the hot water with fresh if it starts to cool down. Never use a microwave. The microwave will cause the antibodies to be destroyed and so the colostrum will be useless. So if you've followed all these measures, how do you know if you're being successful in transferring high levels of antibodies to your calves? Sometimes a calf does not obtain enough antibodies through the colostrum. We call this failure of passive transfer. Calves with failure of passive transfer are more susceptible to infection and suffer higher mortality rates. For example, one research study found that calves below the recommended antibody levels were at twice the risk of developing respiratory disease compared to those with adequate transfer. It's possible to ask your vet to take blood tests to check for antibody levels. This is ideally done within a week of birth. It's best to sample a group of calves to get a good picture of your colostrum management on your farm. Your vet will advise you on the significance of the blood test results and if they show inadequate transfer, we'll be happy to help you investigate the cause of the problem. So, in summary, it's handy to keep in mind the three cues of colostrum. 
give at least three litres of good quality hygienic colostrum within the first two hours of a calf's life. To facilitate this, it's important to collect and store excess colostrum appropriately. Don't forget to collect and store excess good quality colostrum hygienically, taking care to prevent transmission of disease, particularly Yoni's disease. You can keep an eye on how effective your colostrum management is by blood testing calves for antibody levels within a week of birth. You'll find information on stomach tubing, colostrum hygiene, calves and measuring colostrum antibody levels in other films in this Dairy Co series. Remember that however important colostrum is, it's only part of the story when it comes to calf health and productivity. You also need to ensure that calves are kept in clean environments and that they are fed adequately to achieve optimum growth rates. Both these topics are covered in other Dairy Co films. You can find more information about caring for newborn calves on the Dairy Co calf management fact sheets or through the Dairy Co website.